Praise the Lord, everybody. Glad to see many of you here tonight on this beautiful night. And let's just worship the Lord. We've got our hymn books there, but we'll just leave them for the minute. Let's just sing, we have come into this house to magnify his name and worship him. Brother Paul, come on up here. <laughs> There's your wife, there's a seat beside your wife. Here's the Lord. <laughs> All right then, everyone enter again. Come on, you ready? We have come into this house to magnify his name. Sing it again. The folks are still gathering and getting seated and filling the sanctuary. So come on, everyone entering right in. You ready? We have come into this house. And that's what we have done primarily tonight to worship the Lord. Ready? We have come into this house. Sing wherever I am, I'll praise it. Everyone clapping their hands and entering right into it. You ready? Wherever I am. Thank you. 
maybe today you've had a difficult day and there's, there's days that we do and there's a number of needs that we're going to mention before the Lord in a few minutes but I find that if I will give the Lord the sacrifice of praise and the glory that is due to his name that he will make a way for us and he will make a way for you maybe you're here tonight and say well pastor I can't say it of course you can and maybe if you told me your problem I can't see a way out of it either but he can make a way where there is not Hallelujah. and come on let's sing it again and this time I want you clapping your hands and your eyes tight and your face screwed up and just sing with all your might and, and enter right into the blessing you're ready wherever I am and able to see it in a minute ready oh I remember I to do it tonight. Ready? Jesus Bye. 
Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let me say, good to see the Whitewell people gathered out tonight in force to welcome Jean and Paul Bailey. Delighted to have them. We're going to receive from you now the Lord's offering and we're asking you to give us unto the Lord. I am determined, made up my mind. delighted to have Sister Jane and Brother Paul Bailey and I would like them to come up here right now. Let's give them a warm welcome. <laughs> Brother Paul won't talk. He lets the wave talk. We all do the same, don't we? <laughs> all right then, Sister Jane. <laughs> He does talk. He talks at home all the time. <laughs> I have sang so much, I try not to make it a habit to sing in the congregation before I sing. But there's something about Irish people, I tell you, they know how to sing real good. I've got to watch them. But you sing so good, I just couldn't help but enter in and sing with you. So if my voice cracks a wee bit, you just kind of look over. Now I want you to relax. We don't entertain. We're not gospel entertainers. We believe that gospel music's a ministry. How many of you believe that? Amen. And I tell you, we can't see the fruits of our labor. We can't see that God's blessing, then we might as well sit down. Because we're not lifting Paul and Jean Bailey up. We're lifting up the name of Jesus. Because we stand here because of the grace of God. And I'd like to sing a song. It just means all to me. It's entitled, I love him too much. You'll have to excuse me. This is a very, very special moment. I never in a million years thought after 21 years that I'd get to come back. And my heart has been so touched as I've gone back to the places where I've lived, seen so many things that have happened, so many changes that have made, been made since I've gone. But you know, Belfast and Ireland is still, still one of the best wee places in the world. <laughs> and I believe, as we were talking today, that there's only one person that can make a change in this country and his name is Jesus. I sing a song called Only Jesus Can Satisfy Your Soul and Only Jesus 
is going to be able to put an end to the trouble here. And you know, we can do it. All things are possible with God. All things are possible with Him that plays. You listen closely to the words of this song as we sing it.
It's been bubbling. This is a new song over in America, and it probably hit here pretty soon. Larry Wood wrote it, and the name of it is I Fit Good. And as I've been going around, we've walked all up Beers Bridge Road, and up and down doing our toes, meeting friends I hadn't seen in years. And when it go away from one of that little song, we just keep going over. I feel good because there's a lot of them that are going to be coming out to hear us sing. And I thank God that He is using this after all of these years yes. to bring some people under the sign of the gospel yes. that ordinarily wouldn't Love come. That. So I feel good. If you want to clap your hands on this, you just be free to do it.
fought in the back, used to live in America, but now they're back in bed fast the holidays, Jim and Mary. Doc Holiday, yeah, Doc Holiday. But you know what? He's losing something up to hop here. <laughs> it's so good to see old friends. It really is. I tell you, I'm just having the time eating fish. Well, I haven't eaten fish and chips yet. But my mother, one of the first things she said, is, now when you go over there, get a sausage roll and eat it for me. <laughs> so I ate two of them today. I'm going to go back and tell her they taste just like they always did. There's nothing like sausage rolls and sausages. You don't get that in America at all, see. You don't get the buns that you get over there. And what else don't you get? Paul thinks it's great, huh? All the different types. All the different types of bread. Potato bread. bread. So they don't even know what that is over there. <laughs> Now he does, because I fix it for him. And he thinks, isn't this right? I'm going to talk for him on this one. He thinks that Irish women make the best wives. Amen. <laughs> I've got him indoctrinated real good. <laughs> oh, man, let's go on here and sing a couple more songs. This is my favorite song. Of all the songs I sing, and you were in America and you heard this is Brother Jack Moore's song your pastor preached at my home church there, and since then he's gone on to be with the Lord. And it's called Too Much to Gain to Lose, and I'm sure probably the people of Belfast could say this song and mean it maybe more than other people in other countries. You've got too much to gain. To lose. You've been through a lot, but it's worth it all. It's going to be worth it all when we see the face of Jesus. That's the
came to the Lord and it was through your day yeah. on the airplane coming back to Belfast. God spoke to his heart. And knowing her, I know what she'd say, it's worth it. It was worth it. I prayed all of those years for him, and regardless of the cost, it was worth it. So I've got a lot to be thankful for tonight. Not just to be back here, but thankful for the prayers of a praying grandmother and a praying grandfather. And I know they'd be so proud if they could be here just at this very moment. I love God tonight. Let's see, I've got the weeks too. Perhaps by Sunday I'll get all the crying out of the way and I won't have to do it anymore. <laughs> I need to clean it. It's dripping all over the place up here. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's do Touching Jesus. <laughs> I can just hear them singing, and I don't know why. 
mama, I was just about 11 years old, but that stuck in my mind. And the first time I heard it, it did something to me. And I thought, now that's what I want. I want whatever it is they have because I can feel something here that I haven't felt anywhere else. And of course that along with the name of Jesus, because these, this song is just signing this one. Both lift up the name of Jesus because to me there's no other name. No other name like it. The name of Jesus. in 
Jesus, there's just something about that name. Jesus, praise His name. Lovely, lovely. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I was meaning when I told you that they had a ministry. And that is a ministry tonight that we have thoroughly enjoyed. Will you tell your friends about it and spread the news around because they'll bring the sweetness of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our choir, we appreciate them. They're going to sing two pieces. We want them to come up here. Brother James and I will go down a minute. And then Brother Forsyth is going to bring us a wee word. <laughs> And then we'll separate. But before we separate, if we have time, I would like Jean just to sing one number. I know she just had five there. we do it later. I heard footsteps walking in the shadows. It's a beautiful piece and uh, to wind up the gathering tonight. Thank you very much, our choir. And let me say, we're, we're so grateful to Brother Jim Melville. Where is he? Uh, uh, Ah, there he is. <laughs> well, Jim Melville, I don't even know. I, I just heard his name was Jim Melville. We just call him the lovely young man. <laughs> and that's what he's known affectionately as in our church. And we're delighted that he came down to help out and we appreciate it very much. But the choir, the Lord bless them. Come on right up here. And the Lord use you. Praise the Lord.
the Lord. Our young choir's coming on leaps and bounds. That was terrific. Ring, ring the wedding bells. Jesus is coming, isn't it? That was a lovely message. Praise the Lord. Brother Versailles will bring us a closing word. Praise the Lord. <coughs> well, I wonder if you get the hint. I did. Brother Versailles will bring a wee word. <laughs> He's practicing pulling the tail of my coat. <laughs> Amen. Well, it's certainly a wonderful evening to be here yes. and to uh, share in the blessing of the Lord. Sweet ministry we've already had. Uh, Sister Jean said, long time. We, we were in Canada and every now and again, uh, Brother Mahood would say, uh, you know, uh, to one of the sisters there, it's a long way from Devon Parade. You know, he keeps saying this, you know. And then she would keep saying to him, ah, it's a long way from Templemore Avenue. This is where they were born, you see. <laughs> and they were <laughs> explaining to one another. It's a long, long time since Sister Jean swung on my gate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's so marvelous to know that the Lord just really had his hand on her right there. And uh, uh, you see the beautiful work that God has done in our life and given her such a sweet and wonderful gift must have blessed hundreds of thousands untold up and down the, the country with a marvelous singing voice and a wonderful ministry that both of them share together in the Lord yes. through our prayers I believe God can bless and increase it in such a wonderful way wonderful I think it's really marvelous a thrill for me to be here this evening sharing it with you I, I, and you know uh, uh, brother you were sister Jean was saying there that you believe both Paul and sister Jean believes that uh, Irish wives are marvelous <laughs> well I could speak about the English wives <laughs> <laughs> Amen. all wives are wonderful isn't that right someone has said never criticize <laughs> Someone has said, never criticize your wife's choice. Look who she married. <laughs> All right, let's get down, please, to the good word of God this evening. I have just a text. Uh, I've been mulling it over in my mind, and uh, I'd like to share it with you, what I got out of it, pass it right on to you. It's a very well-known text. It's in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 13, verse 8. And that is, of course, so well known, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's repeat it again, shall we? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, 
and forever. Praise the Lord. And so, friend, the first thing that I saw in this lovely text as I looked at it was the fact that the writer was talking about the Christ of resurrection. That's who he's speaking about, the Christ of resurrection. He's speaking about the Christ who said in John chapter 8, verses 28 and 58, he says, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, you shall know that I am. Then he says in verse 58, he says, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. So you can see that the, the wonderful uh, personality around which the text is built is the Christ that has been lifted up. Not only lifted up, that's to say his great cross work, but lifted up from the tomb. Amen. Yes. God lifted him up from the tomb. And so he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The book of the Revelation has something to tell us on the same lines. It says in Revelation 1, 4 and 8, it says that it, he it is who is, who was, who is, and who is to come. He was, he is, and he is to come. In other words, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the margin of my Bible, against that lovely text in Hebrews 13 and 8, I have written just a little word, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Now I, you say to me, why did you write that there? I wrote it for several reasons and I'll share, you, share them with you very briefly. Because the first thing that the text tells me is that he is immutable. Yes. Immutable. Now immutability is a theologian's word. They use it. But you know when it's boiled down to your language and mine, to everyday language, it just means that he is the unchanging one. Glory be to God. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, it's this wonderful Christ that makes this verse, to me, one of blessed assurance. The first thing it tells me is that Jesus is alive. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is alive. The He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. So he is alive. That's the very first thing that springs out of the verse to me. Alive in resurrection power. Glory to God. Yes. That tells me something more. He's alive in resurrection power. What kind of power is that? Matthew 28, 18. All power is given unto me in heaven. That's wonderful, you say. Mm -hmm. But you know, we need it down here. Well, he goes on to say, I'm in earth. Praise God. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And so the text tells me something more about Jesus. It tells me he's alive. Amen. It also tells me he is all powerful. Yes. Glory be to God. He's all powerful. And so my friend, this helps me very, very much. And not only that, you know friend, when God called Abraham, it came to my mind, when God called Abraham to go out, to leave his family, leave his possessions, leave all he had, and go out trusting God. God, first of all, introduced himself to him. And he introduced himself to Abraham and he said, I am God Almighty. Yes, wonderful. Amen. And then he said, now Abraham, go out. <laughs> so Abraham was going out in faith in one who he had already been introduced to as being almighty. And when the Lord Jesus Christ in resurrection was about to commission his disciples to go into all the world 
to preach the gospel, the first thing he said to them is, All power is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Go and preach the gospel. So that we are going in the name and at the command of one who is all powerful. Praise the Lord. I'm glad of that. You know what he was, he is. And what he was and is, he ever will be. That's Jesus. Amen. So this tells me of something more about him. I've just got to think of what he was translated into the present because it's now that I need him and the first another thing that the text tells me is not only he's alive not only is he all powerful but praise the Lord he is approachable Lovely. glory be to God yes. he is approachable you know that lovely hymn that says, Approach my soul, the mercy seat, where Jesus answers prayer. There humbly bow before his feet, for none can perish there. What a difference between the thrones of the despots of old. Yet, yeah, you think of Ahasuerus, that great king in the days of Esther. Although she was queen, she was very beautiful. She pleased us, she pleased the Hazuerus uh, to in every way. Yet if he had not lifted his scepter, when she entered the courtroom, she would have been slain right on the spot. So that you approach the throne of these despots, these personalities, uh, uh, very timorously indeed. But not so, Jesus. Hallelujah. None can perish there. He's approachable. I'm so happy about that. Ever since that grand day when John Baptist pointed him out to two of his disciples and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And Andrew and his friend, his unnamed friend, but we know it was John. We know it was John. All through the book of John, John always talks about some personality unnamed. Yes. And we know really that he's talking about himself. Yes. And so Andrew and his friend, and we believe it was John, approached the Lord Jesus and said, Where dwellest thou? Where dwellest thou? He didn't give them a look that withered them. He gave them an inviting look and said, Come and see. Bless the Lord. Come on. He's approachable. Blessed be his wonderful name. You know, my friend, the leper could approach him. Thank God for that. The leper could approach him. Anyone could approach him. My friend, he was always approachable. No matter where or when, no matter what hour of the day, he was always approachable. Approachable in the morning. Isn't that right? Lovely. When he came down from the mountain, after a night spent with his father, they were waiting for him at the foot of the mountain. Yes. He was approachable. Glory be to God. At midday, after a long weary journey, when the sun was at its zenith, and him wearying there in the midday sun, he was approachable. A little lady came along with a need to draw water at Cyclos well. And Jesus immediately entered into a conversation with her. Hallelujah. And my Bible tells me at eventide, when the sun was set, and he went into a friend's house just to relax, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. Immediately, we are told the house was surrounded and the door of the house crowded. Did he say, I'm here for a rest this evening? Huh? No, he was approachable. He went out to meet them there in their need. And when darkness fell, when darkness fell, I can imagine the picture, can't you? Darkness had come down and I'm sure the disciples would say, well, praise the Lord, it's darkness now and we'll be all right, there'll be nobody bothering us now. There was a knock at the door 
Someone went out and there was a figure there. There's someone looking for you, Master. Will we send them away? We'll, we'll, we'll tell them to come in the morning. No, no. Jesus is always approachable. Hallelujah. Whether it is the morning or the midday or the evening or at night, he is approachable. Praise the Lord. And not only is he approachable, he is, of course, his power is always available. Glory be to God. You know, my friend, this is the Christ of resurrection. The days of his flesh, when he walked among men, it just wasn't so. That is to say, as concerning availability. Because when he was in Galilee, they were looking for him in Jerusalem, but couldn't find him. When he, was, when he went out of the country, in the south of Phoenicia, they couldn't find him in Galilee or Jerusalem. But my friend, it isn't so now, praise the Lord, because he's alive after the power of an endless life, sitting there on the right hand of the majesty on high, still approachable and always available. Blessed be his wonderful name. That's my Christ tonight. Yes, the That's the Christ of this lovely text that I am looking at. This wonderful Jesus. So approachable. So the text tells me he is alive. That's wonderful. Text tells me that he is all powerful. The text tells me that he is approachable. The text tells me he is available. Lovely. Amen. Available. Come on. He's always the same. What do you need tonight, my friend? Eh? What do you need tonight in this meeting? Do you need the peace of God that passeth understanding in the form of grits of his great salvation? Is that what you need tonight? Troubled heart, troubled spirit. Do you need that peace of God? He's here, right here tonight. Just to minister to you exactly what you need. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Brother McConnell has talked about those three fine folk who on Lord's Day evening went into the little vestry. And I'm sure they would jump up immediately and tell us how he met them right there at the point of their need. Glory be to God. Yes, he is available, my friend, tonight to meet your need. Is it some physical malady that's troubling you? Yes. Some bodily need, some affliction that has laid hold of you and is tormenting you? Is it some mental problem that you've been wrestling with for a long, long time and you just haven't yet got the answer to it? Jesus is here. Jesus is available. Oh, my friend, tonight, this lovely text, come to me with a new freshness as I meditated upon it during the week and it got right into my heart and it's my heart I'm giving you this evening. Hallelujah. 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 Telling you about him. It's so easy to talk about him, isn't it? Just I'm sure as our precious sister and our, and our brother find it so easy to minister about Jesus. That's the beauty of all those lovely songs, isn't it? Yeah. He was the center. It's Christ-centered. Amen. It's what he has done. It's what he can do. It's what he is doing. That's the theme of our precious sister's song, our brother and sister's ministry this evening among us. And this is the theme of the little text that God has put on my heart just to briefly tell you about him. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, that's when you need him, today and forever. Isn't that lovely? Would you close your eyes just for a minute? Yes. Word of the Lord here. And you know, I believe that God brought someone here to hear that message tonight. And the emphasis of that message, did you notice the emphasis? He is available. Oh. And you would love to be saved. Would you just slip up your hand and take it down again? We'll see it. We'll pray for you. And God bless you. God bless you too, young woman. God bless you. Two 
lovely young woman here have come to the Savior. And we just say amen. Tell you what we'll do. We'll sing footsteps and then we'll pronounce the benediction because I know there's brethren on night shift tonight.
just praise and magnify your name for what you're doing amongst us, Lord. We thank thee for a real sense of your presence tonight, Lord. We thank thee for your word that has been sung and preached tonight, Father. We give thee thanks for these two young lives, Lord, that have come out for yourselves tonight. Yes, indeed. Lord, we just praise thee for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we just ask that you'll separate us with your blessing. Keep your good hand upon each one of us, Lord. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. And for his name. Amen. Everybody said, will you turn around and shake one another by the hand? Thank you.